Welcome to Newsflakes on Signature TV. I am Bari Kumar Addo. Organized labor has again rejected the latest offer of 54,000 Naira minimum wage made by the federal government during the resumed national minimum wage negotiation on Tuesday. The stalemate resulted in the postponement of a meeting to Wednesday following the inability of the labor leaders and government representatives to reach a consensus. This was the third time the officials of the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress and representatives of the government would fail to find a common ground on the national minimum wage. Last week, the Labour leaders walked out of a meeting hosted by the Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage Negotiation after the federal government offered to pay 48,000 Naira. The federal government says it is partnering with some foreign firms and embassies to offer jobs to Nigerians. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Uzoka Anite, said this at the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the ministry and some foreign partners in Abuja. Anite said the signing of the MOU marks another milestone in the federal government's efforts to ensure that Nigerians have access to quality employment opportunities and explains that the project will be executed by the National Talent Export Programme, NATEP, coordinated by Dr. Femi Adelui. The Chairman, Federal Civil Service Commission, Professor Tunji Olaupa, is calling for the scrapping of a higher national diploma, HND, to end what he termed the lingering professional war with university degrees. Olaupa also asked the technical and vocational education and training sector to revisit the recommendations of a conference of heads of polytechnics and colleges of education in 2017. Governor Peter Mba of Enugu has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Austrian government towards the development of a state. The senior special assistant to the governor on external relations, Uche Anichuku, said in a statement in Enugu that the MOU followed a high-level meeting with Austrian senior government officials, the business community and international development partners. The governor, he said, met with the Austrian Minister of Interior, Gerhard Kana, Minister of Labor and Commerce, Dr. Martin Kocher, and Minister of Agriculture, Norbert Tochnig, some parliamentarians, as well as some bank executives and other stakeholders. European Union member states have agreed to use proceeds from frozen assets of the Central Bank of Russia to support Ukraine's military efforts in the ongoing war with Russia. Under the agreement, 90% of the profits of interest from these assets will be allocated to the European Peace Facility, an EU-run fund providing military aid for Ukraine, while the remaining 10% will be used for bolstering Ukraine's defense industry, capacities and reconstruction needs. Russia has repeatedly criticized the asset seizure measures proposed by the US and other Western countries. Prime Minister Jonas Kat Sotere said on Wednesday that Norway will recognize an independent Palestinian state in the hope that this will help to bring peace with Israel, Ireland and Spain, would also announce the recognition of a Palestinian state, sources said on Wednesday. European Union members Slovenia and Malta have also indicated in recent weeks that they plan to make the recognition, arguing a two-state solution is essential for lasting peace in the region. Before the announcement, some 143 out of 193 member states of the United Nations recognized a Palestinian state. A Chinese UN envoy says putting an end to armed conflicts is the greatest protection for civilians as countless lives are suffering from the ongoing Israeli attacks in the Gaza Strip. Fu Kong, China's permanent representative to the UN, made a statement at a UN Security Council open debate on the protection of civilians in armed conflict. The envoy noted that the primary responsibility of the Security Council is to maintain international peace and security, and that the Gaza conflict, which has lasted more than seven months, has caused unprecedented civilian casualties and a humanitarian disaster. Well, 
That's a package for now. I am Barry Kumo Ado. Thank you.